This war on the Path of Exile 1% is absolutely wild. I'm not in the Blasters camp now, and I never have been, and I won't lie when I say some of the clips I see on Reddit or YouTube send a tingling envy wriggling across my body. However, I don't actually care. I'm glad they're having fun. I'm excited these sorts of things are possible in Path of Exile. After all, envy is the thief of joy. Dang, I wish I could mimic Izaro's voice better. Now, while that is my opinion, there are plenty of other voices in the Path of Exile community, and this latest spat with the launch week of Necropolis League has brought out the worst in some of us PoE players. So, in this video, we're going to examine the war on the 1%, the problem with Path of Exile and social media highlights, if there's any recourse on this matter, or if we're doomed to spiral ever farther into polarity, and how a mid PoE player looks right now. My fellow exiles, Talamoana, I am Try. Subscribe to the channel if you like what you see and hear. Now, let's talk some Path of Exile 1 Necropolis. Exploit early, exploit often. That is a motto many PoE players live by, and a saying I shall not give the honor of using a bad Izaro voice to say. We've seen exploits occur in Path of Exile many times over its long lifetime. However, the focus of this video is Necropolis League, the Lantern of Aramor devoted modifiers, and a bit on Scarabs. When the League came out, it appeared only a select few players understood how to expertly farm the mechanic, but when grinding your games buffed the chance for players to encounter divine orb drops from packs, strategies about the Lantern of Aramor farming flooded YouTube, Reddit, and deep, dark places on the internet. Not only this, people came to understand that the best strategy was to simply blast through as many maps as possible. And that's not clearing the monsters blasting, that's sitting in your hideout and inserting maps into your map device, ad infinitum until you saw the divine orb drop modifier. That is horrible. That is not Path of Exile, and that is not a behavior that grinding your games would like to encourage, and really nobody should want them to encourage that or that to be the best way to play the game. Now, of course, I do understand that some people see that sitting in your hideout is the best way to play the game. Flipping various items and currencies and all that is a great way to become a mogul, but for the vast majority of people, that's too difficult, too complicated, and just <laughs> intricate to track. But blasting through maps and the map device that's pretty easy. Anybody can do that, and that is a degenerate way to actually play the game. It turns Path of Exile into a glorified, simplified slot machine. That's not good. So that was patched out eventually because, and people have an incorrect opinion here, because lots of people were doing it, and grinding your games likely has this data on their end. Some people believe that it was patched out because it was highlighted on social media, primarily Reddit and YouTube and Twitch. People saw streamers using this strategy and getting tons of divines. People saw people on Reddit using this strategy and getting hundreds of divines and maps with strong boxes and frogs and rats. So that means, okay, there are these few scenarios that are happening, and now Grinding Your Games is addressing the issue because of these few single scenarios. That's bad. Of course, the scenarios that are posted on Reddit and YouTube are the outliers, right? Why would they address this only because of a few outliers? Well, we don't have the exact information, everybody, but we do know that GGG tracks all of this stuff internally. They can see player behavior pretty down to the second. They can understand what players are doing in their hideouts with the map device, with the league mechanic, with all these items. So they likely saw on their end that people were sitting in their hideouts, buying maps or using various map farm strategies and then just going through them until they saw the divine mods. And they saw that far too many people were doing this strategy and they knew they needed to act. It wasn't because you saw somebody on Reddit who got 60 divines in a map and then you saw somebody in global chat who said, I just got 158 divines from another map just using this strategy. The 6% divine drop with the rat packs and strong boxes, bam, they just were doing that, right? And you know, it's just a few people. It's not a few people, everyone. It was probably happening en masse and they needed to act fast or else the entire economy of the league was going to be broken. So we have that first big problem here. Social media, Reddit in particular, does not represent what the majority of players are seeing on their end. 
This is a rarity. Some people understand that and some people don't. Some people think that exactly and then they say, oh, GGG, why are you exactly making this change when it's a minority? Well, it's because a lot of people are doing this or attempting it. Maybe not so lots of people were hitting the divine drops, but lots of people were attempting to hit said divine drops, so that's why the developers acted. The second problem here, though, is the FOMO or the fear of missing out that is occurring in the Path of Exile community because of this. Lots of people see this as, oh my gosh, people exploited early, often, and they were rewarded for it while I wasn't because I couldn't play 20 hours a day and pack up a bunch of maps and then just blast through them. And then I didn't get the rat packs with the divines and I didn't get the meat sacks with the divines. Now I've completely lost out and I won't be able to play the league to my fullest potential because I missed out. And still others are saying, okay, yeah, this is a problem, and grinding your games should have seen this coming. They are not completely out of the woods here. They are partially to blame that they did not foresee that players would, of course, do the most degenerate thing possible and just try to blast through maps and get the Divine Modifier as much as they could, okay? There's a lot of different sides here. It's a complex issue, right? There are lots of people angry. The developers are probably scrambling. Some people are saying this is the worst league ever. Others are saying, oh my gosh, this is so profitable. And oh no, now this strategy is completely nerfed. What am I gonna do? Well, actually, I have a ton of divines, so I'm actually gonna be fine. Nobody's gonna ever be able to catch up to this massive amount of currency that I was able to make because I exploited early and I exploited a ton when I could. So what, if anything, is the solution here, everyone? This is quite the contentious issue. We're essentially asking that Grinding Your Games finds out all the exploits possible before they release the patch, and they do patches every three to four months. Now, they've done a pretty good job about it. But this time, obviously, something slipped through the cracks, they overbuffed it, and now they nerfed it into oblivion after people abused it, right? It's a tricky issue because this is going to happen in a game of this size and a game of this scale in terms of how often patches come out. So really, and this is going to be controversial, the impetus is on us. Or not us as a community, but on you as an individual because this is going to keep happening. We are not going to be able to stomp out all the bugs and exploits in Path of Exile 1 ever. This sort of farming strategy will always occur. And with the Scarab piece, right, these aren't exploits, but these are just lucky people that are hitting the absolute jackpot drop posting it onto social media, and then everybody thinks, oh, why not me? Why can't I hit this? Why am I not lucky? What's going on? And honestly, everyone, in a game of this size, in a game where all these different factors interplay, the chances of you getting those wild drops that you see on YouTube or Twitch or Reddit are very, very low. So you cannot let those situations and circumstances drive your ability to enjoy the game fully. That's the problem here. You need to understand that all of your game time, all of your experiences cannot be exactly what you're seeing on social media. You can't let that rule your mind. This is a big problem with everybody in today's society, right? We see social media, we see people's perfect lives or the perfect situations unfolding to others, and we think, why not us. And now we're seeing it in Path of Exile, which honestly is a microcosm of the greater world, right? But because we're all so enmeshed in this community and we're all so involved and we communicate heavily and we see all these crazy things happening, we get so attached to it that it legitimately affects our lives and attitudes and relationships and everything else. If we see these wild things happening and we can't participate in them, or we're not lucky enough to have ourselves able to experience them and we start to blame each other, we start to blame the developers. But we really do need to think about this. Path of Exile is a game. We need to enjoy said game. We need to wash aside all that envy that we have for others who are hitting the jackpot drops or others who can play all day and they can exploit early and often. You need to think about your situation. You need to see yourself as an individual and say, here's what I want to do in Path of Exile. Here's my goal. 
You don't want to orient yourself alongside others all the time. People who play solo self-found in Path of Exile have essentially done this. What I'm trying to say is people who play in Trade League, try not to compare yourself to all these people who are able to mass tons of currency and all these powerful items less than a week into the league. Try to think of yourself more as an SSF player who uses trade at times. Because if you do that, your viewpoint on Path of Exile as a whole will change. If you don't constantly compare yourself to everybody else, you will have a better time. I know that this is one of the driving factors in Path of Exile, comparisons to others. And it's something that Chris Wilson talked about often, why trade is necessary. Because you always need to have that carrot of, okay, I could trade this to somebody else, or I am so much more powerful than this person, that's why I enjoy playing the game. But if you just lax for a second, if you just take a step back and don't get so heated about these situations, especially at League Start, when everything is a little jumbled and the economy is wacky, you will have a more enjoyable time. Not everyone is blasting red maps or in purple maps or farming ubers and getting mirror drops and fracturing shard drops and all these divine orbs. Some people, even content creators, are just playing the game like you and taking their time. You know, I did a poll a few days after League Start to our community and it showcased exactly where everybody was and the majority of people were not at Endgame. Unsurprisingly, they were where I was or they were in the campaign or they were just starting out. It's okay, you don't have to blast to be a member of the Path of Exile community, and you don't have to blast to have an opinion either. Trust me, check out where I am right now, just under a week after Path of Exile Necropolis Leagues start. And this is the experience of a more common player, you know, me, talkative try, and many other people that are commenting on my videos and on Reddit. You know, we're not all the way in red maps, we're not farming purples, we're not at the Ubers. We purchase MTX for $90 during the league, and we are quite poor. I have not even invested a divine into this build yet, and I was not fishing for the divine mod when it was available in mass, really. As you can see here in my map tab, I'm not even hitting reds yet. I haven't even really gotten to the top tier of yellows. This wasteland map is the highest tier map that I've found. So, you know, we're going into this one and we're going to see what we can find and we're going to get the real necropolis experience here all together today. We're not juicing. We're not going super hard on these maps. We're just playing. Okay, look, orbs of binding. That's cool. Uh, yep, we're going to choose these. And there's no huge benefits here. Hopefully we get some orbs of binding and that's about it. Load into the map and let's start going, you know? We're not zooming or anything, we're just casually going through the map, having a good time. If we find something, we find something. If we don't, well, that's unfortunate. That's just the way it goes though, honestly. Like I said, no divines this league yet, no big drops. I sold a meat sack for like 10 chaos orbs. That's about it so far. Let me know in the comments what's the biggest drop that you've found so far. I'd love to hear it. I'd be quite interested to see. DPS isn't anything incredible either. You know, we're not doing a bow build. We're doing some little niche off meta. We have a Harbinger here. Of course, no investment yet, so we're not going to get any crazy drops. No mirrors or mirror shards. Maybe some annulments. Definitely not any of the fracturing ones either. Oh, maybe. Look, look at that. Chaos. Oh, we got some alchemy shards, which is great because I am low on alchemy orbs. Yes, I'm not kidding. I can't even buy the missions from Kirak presently. Don't have enough alchemy orbs for that. Despite fully clearing and looting every single unique that I can. It's been a toughie. Super tough. It's okay, though. I'm having fun. Ooh, this is rough. Okay, we got that. The chaos recipe has actually been my friend. Has it been your friend? How many leagues have you had to do the chaos recipe? Because I feel like I've done it more often than most. All right, we're keeping on the progress. Okay, we're getting close to the map boss. Hopefully he drops our first Reddit tier map. That would be phenomenal. 
what a what a piece of footage it would be to record that on. We've got my strategy, which is the sacred grove. I'm just stacking up as much currency there, basically a gold farmer. Except I'm getting the juice. Oh, we've got a mirrored boss. Twins here. Not bad at all. Slowly making our way through. Oh yeah, no damage. We can activate our flasks now. I don't even have my flasks optimized. Come on, give us our first red. Give us our first red. And nothing. We've got some six sockets. Okay, we've got a frost breath and a T5 map. So, of course, what are we going to do now that we've blasted this map, gone through it? We're going to make sure that we fully clear the map because we are poor. We do not have any currency. We need to make sure that we get everything we can out of the highest tier map that we have encountered thus far. So even though this is a T10 map, everyone, I know, absolutely wild, I am going to go back through and kill every monster I can. And yes, that includes the harvest, which I have invested in. I'm gonna try to get as much juice as possible. Need glass blowers flasks as well. Glass blower bobbles, apologies. Because I still don't have any instillings, as you can see. I've not automated my flasks. It's a manual use there. Thankfully, I'm pretty tanky, as you can see. Only a few weaknesses. One of those is my damage, of course. As you can see. Alright, we're gonna do this as well. At this point in the video, you probably understand. I am not a blaster. I am one of the people that is, you know able to complain about not blasting and missing on everything, but it's okay. I don't do that. We don't need to do that, everyone. As long as you're having fun in the game, that is vital. And if your fun is related to being able to blast and exploit and get all the currency as fast as possible in the game, but you're not able to do that because you don't have the time, well, you might need to move on, guys, or just find other ways to have fun. This game is great. And there's a lot of avenues to enjoy it. Don't judge your fun. Please don't judge your fun by the amount of currency that you can farm per hour. That is an excellent way to suck all of your fun out of a video game, okay? Focus on other things. Focus on personal goals and achievements in said game. Try to make a cool build. Try to get farther than you have before. If you want to clear these T17 maps, set that as the goal before the end of the league. And no, you don't need to play 20 hours per day to do so. If we look right now, how long have I played? And I'm probably above average, everyone. I played for 21 hours, okay? Some of that is AFK time, but let's just say I played for 21 hours since the league has started. I think that's probably for a Path of Exile player. Average, okay? Of course, there are a lot of people who have played less and are only in the campaign, but you don't need to zerg through everything. You're going to be fine. Everything's going to go well. With that, I guess we can go all the way back to the beginning of the map, which I did skip, unfortunately. We can really just fast forward at this point because I think you understand it. I'm having a great time and I don't need to blast, okay? Here's a tremendous thanks to everyone who watched this video to the end. And a massive thank you to each and every one of my supporters. You can help grow and support this channel for free by liking and sharing this video, hitting subscribe and the sub notification bell, and leaving a totally sane comment. I appreciate you. Anyways, that's all for this one. Talakura, fellow exiles.